días, mis amigos. In the book of Revelation, uh, in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20, uh, talks about uh, Christ's reign on earth for a thousand years. No, don't. No. So, the return of Christ, and uh, during that time, when he's on earth, uh, Satan is bound. He's uh, chained up in the pits of hell. So, after reading uh, chapter 20, uh, I come to this conclusion now. Uh, those of you who are watching, you may have a different opinion uh, about what I have, but uh, this my own opinion. What I gather from reading uh, Revelation, I gather that he's already concluded before he ran before he read Revelation 20. That's what I think. He made his conclusion before he even read it. That's what I think. Because he heard somebody else say it. He trusted man before he trusted God. And that's why he's delusional. Revelation 20. Um you know, there's a whole lot of different opinions out there um, that people take, you know, from, from the Bible. And we all form our own opinions, but we have one thing in common, and uh, that's uh, being with God in no. the end. So, we, uh, we will have that in common because every knee will bow, right? And everybody's going to know at the end of the world. Everybody's going to know when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We have that in common. What we don't have in common is that we that are saved will be lifted up. And you that are not saved will be left on the ground looking up at us in the air with the Lord Jesus. And fire will come down from God out of heaven and devour you. We don't have that in common. That's really the most important part. No matter what, you know, people agree or disagree on, we all have that one common. Yeah, the, well, no matter what, but the truth matters. Make no mistake about that. The truth absolutely matters. Goal, and that's to be with, uh, be with the Lord. So, getting back. Uh, Wait, what, what do you say here? I missed it. I'm talking too much. Goal, and that's to be with uh, so no matter what you know people agree or disagree on we all have that one common goal and that's to be with uh, be with the Lord Ooh, well I don't know can we, all of us you people that don't even care people that full on reject the Lord Jesus Christ no no how about those that say they believe in Jesus. For example, you know, in Matthew 24, Jesus says, Many will come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Well, they have the goal. They have a goal to be with Jesus, too. Here in Matthew 7, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. So these people had the goal of meeting the Lord Jesus. The problem is they think that they will get there by their own works they think they can save themselves and Jesus says I never ever knew you at any point in time never knew you I never knew you they're never saved so you can you can say I guess well we all have the same goal you know the saved and the unsaved the the believer and the deceiver but uh, you're you're in trouble. So, getting back, uh, 
Revelation 20, the, from the way I took, uh, Christ will reign on earth for a thousand years. And during that time... And again, in Revelation 20 does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It doesn't say anybody reigns a thousand years. I mean, it's unbelievable. You got that from listening to Reverend Schmitty and you believed him. You didn't even read the actual words. You just heard him say, oh, well, Jesus reigns a thousand years. It never says Jesus reigns a thousand years. And if I sound condescending, that's because I am. All right. And it, you, you're you going to have to develop some thicker skin. All right. Because this is pure evil. All right. And I got to be soft and cuddly toward the wickedness of the deceivers? I don't think so. I'm, I'm not playing your game. You go play your game, and I'll stick with the Word of God, okay? Yeah, I'm being condescending, and I'm telling you, these people are all headed for hell. Every single one of them. And um, that's the case I'm making, all right? That all these people that preach this idea of a bonus thousand years, they're all going to hell. The same thing with all those people that point to the Greek and the Hebrew. They're all going, they're, they're headed to hell. Every single one of them. Because they do not believe the word of God. They do not believe God. They do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. All these people that reject once saved, all uh, once saved, always saved, they reject everlasting life. They reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're all headed to hell. Now, what am I supposed to do? You think I'm supposed to be soft and cuddly? These people are lying to, you know, they can lie to me, that's fine, but they're lying to my family, my children, my children's children, your children, their children's, you are your children's children. I mean, they're lying to the kids, to the all the children in our communities. And these are the people in power and with great influence, and they have the majority on their side. And but I, being a rare breed, I've got to be soft and cuddly. Ah, you can blow it out your nose, buddy. I ain't being soft and cuddly. All right, go play your games somewhere else. And obviously I'm referring to a comment I got the other day. As I said, uh, that Satan will uh, be bound to the pits of hell. Um, of course, he'll be released um, for a period of time. Yeah, can anybody, uh, is, this is a side note here, can anybody explain to me why? He's wearing sunglasses inside. Are the lights too bright for him? Uh, it's not It's not a big deal, but it just, it looks odd to me. You're wearing sunglasses indoors. I used to do that too. I get it. I But the thing is, when I did it, it's because I was stoned out of my mind. I didn't want nobody to see my eyes. Bloodshot. But whatever when the whole uh, tribulation is going on. So... Wait, what? Uh, that Satan will uh, be bound to the pits of hell. Um, of course, he'll be released um, for a period of time when the whole uh, tribulation is going on. Now, you're just making up stuff. Okay, so he's saying... I'm just going to follow along with... And I'll tell you right now, I have not watched... I watched about the first 30 seconds. I have not watched this part, but I want to follow along with what this guy says. So he's saying that Jesus will come, and then he'll come in the clouds of heaven, and then he'll be on the earth for a thousand years, and then Satan will be loosed, and then there will be a period of tribulation. Okay? It, you know, it almost sounds plausible uh, if you had no idea what the Bible says, right? 
I mean, if you're completely in the dark, you might think, yeah, okay. Well, this is comic book stuff right here. This is ridiculous. This, I don't know if he got this from watching a movie or something. This isn't in the Bible at all. It's weird. It, it's weird. It's very, 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 very weird. Uh, to those of us that actually know what the Bible says. And again, all these people that uh, teach, uh, uh, you know, they call themselves pre-millennialist. Okay. I call them hellbound, right? Because they're um, they're liars. Because Jesus says immediately after the tribulation, he comes in the clouds of heaven. This guy is saying that it's the tribulation. There's a period of tribulation, the great tribulation, will be a thousand years after. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Which, by the way, this is interesting. If you notice here that um, it talks about, uh, you know, a tribulation. After the tribulation, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You notice what this guy is saying here, that Satan will be loosed and there will be a period of tribulation. Right? It's interesting to me because Revelation 20 says after Satan is loosed, then Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Well, you're going to leave out the part because Reverend Smitty doesn't, doesn't pick up on this because he doesn't believe any of it anyways. But you never hear these guys talk about, well, Jesus was on the earth for a thousand years and then he goes back up to heaven again and then he comes in the clouds of heaven again it's it's nonsensical they won't talk about it because it they can't make any sense out of it so what I understand now um, there's going to be a false prophet during this time oh uh, so my goodness sakes are you kidding me all right so here we go we got jesus he comes in the clouds of heaven all right jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and then there's a thousand year period all right after this and then there's a there's a period of time where satan is loosed all right and then uh, there's a tribulation period of time. And um, my guess is that during this tribulation period of time, there will be uh, some kid, I guess. I, you know, I don't know. The false prophet has to be a believer, doesn't it? The false prophet, doesn't the false prophet have to be the saved? A saved person? Um, be, you know, I say that because, oh, I, am I in the right spot here? The parable of the wheat and the tares, am I in the right spot here? Yeah. So in the parable of the wheat and the tares, the wheat are gathered up into the barn, which is above, and the tares, which is the unsaved, they are put in bundles and burned. All right, so then... A thousand years after that, um, I, boy, I can't, can't hardly wrap my head around this idea. So he's saying that unsaved people will live after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You know, it's not this complicated, but I want to try to understand. All right, so let's go to Second Peter chapter three. Where it says, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, verse 10, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. 
All right, so he's going to say, or he has to, he's taking a position that, yes, Jesus comes as a thief in the night, and yes, the heavens and the earth pass away. And the earth also and the works that are therein are burned up, yes, but unsaved people will still live after this. And not only that, uh, you probably don't want to talk about all the sex that's going to be going on, do you? Yeah, that kind of, you know, probably give yourself away if you did that, wouldn't it? Talk about a thousand years of, of uh, sex parties or whatever it is that you're preaching here. All right. You don't want to talk about that, but t you're talking about the false prophet. That apparently, what what is it, a child? That is born with a 666 tattoo on his head? I Just be honest if that's what you believe. Now, obviously we have different opinions, but I would like for these people to talk about exactly what it is that they believe. Where is this false prophet coming from? Because in order to make that case, you have to say that the unsaved live through this here in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, when the Lord comes as a thief in the night, and the heavens and the earth pass away. Somehow they made it, the unsaved make it to the other side. It, 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 the same people, those same people, I'll bet you, those same people are the ones that say that during the uh, flood of Noah, that there was actually more than eight people saved. Right? You know, the Nephilim, Lenites, people that believe in, uh, believe that we, the sons of God, are fallen angels. You know, they'll they'll talk about the the Nephilim. They swam underwater for a whole year and however long. You know what I'm saying? And so there was more than eight souls that survived the flood. You've heard these people, no? All right, so they essentially say that the Bible is lying and that they've got this whole comic book doctrine nobody can put their eyes on. And they all cower in shame when somebody comes at them with the truth. All right, nobody is surviving this. All right, and I, I've, I went over this uh, uh, a number of times. All right, so in like in Matthew 24, for example, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, all the tribes of the earth mourn. Right? In Revelation chapter 1, it says, All the tribes of the earth shall wail. So they're going to be mourning. They're going to be wailing. Right? All kindreds of the earth shall wail. Excuse me. All kindreds of the earth shall wail. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and of course, in Luke 21, it even goes so far to say that men's hearts will be failing them for fear. They're going to be having heart attacks, man, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Well, wh why? Well, if they only knew that they would survive the heavens and the earth being on fire, they don't have to believe in Jesus. They'll get a bonus thousand years where there is no death, right? Isn't that what you're saying? There's nothing but peace for a thousand years. And there's no sin for a thousand years because Satan's locked up according to these people. No? I mean, that's what he's saying. He's just, these people are incapable of putting two thoughts together. I'm not kidding you. They're all liars and deceivers. Now why would you, I don't know, you know what, if people believe this stuff, they deserve to be delusional. They deserve to be hellbound. So, uh, it's uh, one of Satan's. Uh, prophets, and he's going to deceive many. And um, so, 
then after that period of time, uh, the Lord will release Satan from the pits of hell. Wait a second now. I'm all kind of... So, Satan is loosed? And then loosed again? Does that make any sense? We're going to be one of Satan's prophets, the false, what he calls a false prophet. Satan will be, uh, be bound to the pits of hell. Um, of course, he'll be released. Right there it is. He'll be released for a period of time. He'll be released for a period of time. And then there's going to be a false prophet. So then after that period of time, uh, Satan's going to be released. What is going on with people? How, how do people get this stupid? I mean, it's as if their brains don't work at all. And the thing is, this is not just this fella here. It's 99.9% .9 of the, the world can't use their brain. There's something going on in this world, isn't there? Am I the only one? I feel like I'm in a Twilight Zone episode. I really do. How do... How do people get to this point in their life? Because they're not like this as children. Somehow, these children are growing up, and they're losing the ability to use their brain. Something's going on. And again, it's not just him. It's a whole world of people out there, like walking zombies. Oh. And, uh... So, during that time, we all must be uh, loyal to our Father. And it says that uh, people uh, will be beheaded. This is just all the part of the great, the great tribulation that's going to happen. All right, so Jesus is going to come, and he's going to be on earth for a thousand years. Satan is going to be loosed, and then the, there's going to be a false prophet, and then Satan's going to be loosed again, and then people are going to be getting their heads cut off. All right. I'm following. Uh, it's just, you know, this has just been on my mind, and, and I was thinking that when Christ <laughs> is on earth for this thousand-year period, uh, thousand year period, um you know, which he could return at any moment. And during that thousand year reign, we would have peace, but... Wait, okay, so there's going to be peace. Like I said earlier, there's going to be peace, and but people are going to be getting their heads cut off. Well, I guess me and you have a different view of what peace is all about. Right? Uh, because... First of all, there is no thousand-year period uh, after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, that's that's not in the Bible anywhere. We are in that thousand-year period right now. All right, right now. Now, of course, you're not saved, so you're not going to see it. All right, and then of course, I'm putting my hope into. Uh, eternal life of peace, not a thousand years of peace. All right, but in your view, it seems to me that you're thinking, hey, Christians getting their heads cut off, that's peace. Uh, you can dig that, can't you? Uh, you got Satan roaming around, you got a false prophet, and you got Christians' heads being chopped off and you're calling this a period of peace. Think about that. Let me say that again. 
this during this period, right, Satan's going to be rolling around. You're going to have a false prophet, and you're going to have Christians getting their heads cut off. You're calling that a period of peace. I don't necessarily believe everything will be uh, good and dandy because, like I said, you know, from what I understand, there'll be that false prophet, and he'll deceive many and have a lot of... Hey, here's an idea. Maybe that false prophet is a false teacher, and that's happening today, this world. This world is the false prophet. The false prophet is anything that is taught, that is absent from God. Alright, so the false prophet is a false teacher of God because it is absent of God. God. It's false. It's not true. A true prophet is the true teaching of God. A false prophet is an untrue teaching of God. That's the world that we live in now, and the world is full of it more so now than ever before. What What do you think? Some kid's going to be born with a 666 tattoo on his head and he's gonna what's okay so he's he's the false prophet all right so what's this false prophet gonna teach what's he gonna say that you're gonna know that's not true how are you gonna know what he says is not true what kind of things are you gonna be teaching what's he gonna be teaching that we all came from monkeys is that what he's going to be teaching? Is he going to be teaching um, this idea that, hey, we sent men to, the, to, to outer space, to the moon. We got men walking around in outer space. Is that, I mean, what kind of stuff is this false teacher, false prophet going to be teaching? That you're going to say, hey, no, 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 no. Huh? Well, I mean, it's weird because you're calling this a period of peace. This false prophet is going to be deceiving people during what you call a period of peace. And that's weird. That's very weird. A lot of his followers, and they'll make war against... All right, so there's and this during this period of peace, the false prophet is going to have many followers, and they're going to make war against us Christians, right? Now, that's peace. Huh? <laughs> they're going to be... Uh, we Christians are going to be having our heads cut off, and you guys will be making war against us, and this is a oh, time of peace. Can't wait for that. It's Christians and here on earth. So, anywho, we have to stay strong, and we all know that. And, uh, anyways, uh. What? That's it? That's about all I wanted to talk about. I, I, that's all you could remember your, rev your favorite pastor talking? You just echoed a couple of things? You put no thought together? Don't want to try to ramble on. There you go. Like me. And, uh, but anyway, uh, Don't want to make any video, sense. Um, I want to continue on talking about the tribulation period. You do. And, uh, the, those who are, uh, who believe in, uh, pre-tribulation and, uh, Or excuse me, pre uh, pre rapture. Well, pre tribulation. Pre rapture. Wait, what is that? Pre rapture is that the rapture before the rapture? Is that something like faking left and then faking right and then faking like you're gonna fake left again? And, and uh, post tribulation, you have your different believers, so. Anyways, uh, I appreciate you watching. Thank you.
Good God Almighty. Well, that's the world that we're in right now. That guy's probably the smartest one of the whole bunch out there. I'm not kidding you. Uh, so, of course, uh, you know, I want to encourage this guy to try to string some thoughts together. So, I'm just going to throw that out there and see how he responds. I mean, depending on how he responds, I'll continue the conversation. You know how people are. They, if you say, some people will take this as though I'm threatening their life, and they'll call me the devil. I'm not kidding you. That's how people are today. All right, so let me just make the case here. I'm going to just go on a short little rant here, a, a secondary rant. You know, you know how like Satan was, re re uh, Satan was le uh, released. You know, Satan was released, and then he was released again. Just like how Jesus is coming in the clouds of heaven, and then he's going to come in the clouds of heaven again. I'm going to go on a, I ran it already once, and now I'm going to ran again. All right, if you're interested. I don't know if anybody even watches. but Now, again, let me say that we are in the last day. Today could be the day that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And let me make this point here. All right. So, first of all, he's going to come at an hour in which no man knows, right? He's going to come at an hour that nobody is expecting. All right. But of that day, I could have just... Did I have that open here? Gee whiz. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. All right, now consider this. Jesus is going to come at a, at a moment, well, just like this moment right here. I might be sitting here doing one of these uh, sermons or videos or whatever, and talking and ranting and, you know, cussing and cursing and all that sort of stuff. And then Jesus might come at that very moment. Right? So I got I want to be mindful that I don't, you know, I try to, try not to cuss. It's hard sometimes. I mean, these people are cramping my language here. Or you people, I should say. When I see those people, I got to be mindful I choose my words wisely, right? Because I feel like just going, you know, cuss, cuss, cuss. And I'm fired up. I get fired up about this stuff because the truth does matter. Now, in Matthew 24, it says, Of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. As the days of Noah were, so shall also. The coming of the Son of Man be. Now, I think one thing that gets lost in this, in my opinion, because I've listened to a few people talk about this stuff. And so, I, the one thing that I never really hear, I've never heard, to be honest with you. Then this is why I keep repeating it. In the days of Noah, there was only eight souls saved. All right, so when it says, as the days of Noah were so also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So, if there was only eight people saved in the days of Noah, why would there be eight souls saved when Jesus comes? Or why would there be a lot more than eight souls saved? Now, what makes you think there will be a million people still alive when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? There won't be. There won't be a million I, I, if there was a million people saved, then again, then God ain't right. There's something wrong. No, there's not going to be a million people saved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There's not going to be a hundred thousand people saved because that ain't right. That ain't right. It, it, because there's still opportunity for more to get saved, right? It, it would, it just wouldn't be right. 
It would be too soon if there was 100,000 people on earth still saved. Let's say it was there are 10,000 people. Well, that's still too many people. You can't come. If there are 10,000 people saved right now, it's too soon. Right? And let's say there's 1,000 people that are saved. No, that's that's too many people, right? It's too too many people. Let's say there's a hundred people that are saved. Isn't that still too many people? I mean, you I guess you can make the argument that hey, you could pick a thousand or a hundred different uh, random locations all around the world and say each person that is saved is is, is isolated. Is, doesn't have anybody else saved around them and then you could say once that those people die then that's it there won't be any more saved you could you can make that case but I I don't see any reason to uh, uh, to believe that right you consider in Um, for example, let's go to, for example, let's go to Genesis 18. Genesis 18, when Abraham negotiated with the Lord. And he went from 50 all the way down to 10, saying if there are 10 righteous Will you not spare that city full of uh, filthiness for ten sake? And so that's as far down as he could get it. And of course, what happens? Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around about, they all got destroyed, didn't they? There wasn't even ten righteous. All right, in the days of Noah, there wasn't even, or there was, there was eight saved. There wasn't even ten saved. There was eight so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, what makes you think there's going to be a hundred people saved? And if you go to, for example, Luke 18, the question is asked, never, the, the God will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? That's a, that's a heck of a question to be asked. Will anybody believe? Will anybody be saved? And then, of course, you go to Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Matthew 24 specifically, it says, Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So we're coming up to a point. If God allowed things to continue as they are, there would be nobody saved. Not one person. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So let's say today is that day. That would mean there's only a handful of people in the world today saved. So all these people that preach, uh, you know, premillennialism, they're all delusional. They're all delusional. The gentleman that I just uh, shared with you, delusional. They're all delusional. What's it say in Isaiah? 65. Does anybody read that? 66. See, I need to read it because I don't remember. I also will choose their delusions. See, we, we live in a world full of people that are delusional. And I will bring their fears upon them. See, their fears... Oh, the Antichrist is coming, or the false prophet is coming, Satan's coming, he's going to be chopping people's heads off, and they're going to make war, they're going to gather the troops, make war, ah, you know, whatever. I, I can't make any sense of what these people are saying. They're afraid of Satan being loose. They think, he, oh, he, oh, he's he's going to get, he's going to get uh, tied up and put in prison, and then we're going to be free to have sex they won't talk about that because that's really what it's all about all right and then satan's going to be loosed and then he's going to gather together his people 
Wait a second, where does people come from? And how they survive the heaven and the earth passing away? Right? It doesn't make any sense. That these people are delusional. Anybody that preaches or you know what they call themselves premillennialism, right? They're saying that Jesus will come and then there'll be a bonus thousand years of sex. If they're honest. It's hard to get these people to be honest. That's what it is. All these people that preach against easy believism, they're saying They'll say that, well, you got to obey the law. And if you break the law, then you lose your salvation. And you're no longer saved. Right? Of course, the standard that they lay out, they don't keep for themselves. And this is all in the Bible, too. All these people are liars and deceivers. Every single one of them. All these people that point to the Greek and the Hebrew reveal themselves as somebody that does not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. Right here in Isaiah 66, I will choose their delusions and bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I called, the Word of God. The, this is the Word of God. What you're reading here, what you're seeing here is the word of God it is God calling when I spake this is the the word of God this is God speaking but they're not hearing but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that which I delighted not the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the word of God is not just something that we have to try to decipher from old manuscripts. That's not true at all. All those people that are pointing to old manuscripts, they're all deceivers. They're all delusional. They're all hellbound. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. See, these words are not just words on a piece of paper you should have known that you should have known that you really nobody all these people they got no excuse no excuse and this stuff is it's overwhelming in the bible overwhelming but it's only for those it's only meant for those of us that are saved to be able to see it to understand it right for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See? It's, it's more than just words on a piece of paper let's see if I can find something in Isaiah somewhere no I can't find nothing oh oh I know what it is now come on well okay so yeah there we go let's go right to it 59 59 and Isaiah 59 as for me this is my covenant my promise with them saith the Lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth he's talking about the people of God the people of God it's not talking about to ancient an ancient tribe that you know this these are not words that are written in vain this is talking about the children of god those of us that are saved if you put yourself outside of that by your own words you've condemned yourself why would you put yourself outside of the people of god 
the people of God in the Old Testament, it's the same as me. They're my people. I'm their people. There's no difference between me and them. No difference at all. First Peter chapter 2. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but have now, but now have obtained mercy mercy see we we are that people the the hebrews of exodus moses led his people out of egypt we are the people of god there's no difference between us and them right you see the parallels here in exodus 19 you are a king but you you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests in first peter chapter 2 ye are a royal priesthood, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a peculiar treasure. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right? We that are saved are the children of Israel. Just as Moses led his people out of the wickedness of Egypt, so also will the Lord Jesus Christ lead us out of the wickedness of this world. All right. All right, so back to... Matthew 24, except those days be short, and there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So we're coming up to a point where nobody saves. So if you consider today being the last day, then you have to whittle down those numbers down to almost nothing. All right? Because there's, it would be, it wouldn't be right if there was a billion people saved today if there's a billion people saved two as of 2020 2.4 billion Christians in the world if that's the case all right compare this with what we just read in Matthew 24 except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened clearly referring to the fact that there won't hardly be anybody saved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? And now you're going to tell me there are 2.4 million Christians in the world today. 2.4 billion saved people in the world today? then you have to nullify about two-thirds of the Bible. <laughs> if any man say unto you, Lo, here's Christ, or there, believe it not. All right, so if you make the connection here, if you're able to connect the dots with this Christ and the Pope in Rome, all of a sudden this makes sense. If you don't, make that connection then this doesn't make any sense at all and of course those that are not saved they're not going to understand it because they don't believe nor should they understand it because they don't believe God will choose their delusions so when they see that they'll say oh well that's talking about the future or you know you got the idiots that'll say oh that's already happened yeah, don't worry about it he's tear that out of your Bible. You know, you've got idiots on the left and you got dummies on the right. And not none of them deserve to understand it because none of them believe. For there shall arise false Christ, false Pope, 
they're not they're not Christ. I know they claim to have the keys of death and hell. They don't. They claim to be the representative of Jesus Christ on earth. They're not. And the false prophets are the false teachers of God. The false teachers, false prophets, same thing. And they shall show great signs and wonders. All right, let's. Can we give an example of that? A great. I mean, I think it'd be too easy to point to all the things the Catholic Church does. Great signs and wonders. I think, you know, you you hear people that I've heard people talk about the shroud. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair evidence of the deceivers, the the shroud of Christ or whatever they call it. And you know, you've seen these statues where they're crying. I mean, these are small things. But when you consider also, oh, you know what? I wanted to do a whole another study. That reminds me. I was, you know, if I if I go off on this direction, it'll be another forty five minutes. I was wanting to wrap this up. The great science in heaven. All right. So if you go here. And or here we go this way. Either way, what in the world's going on here? Up in the, at the very front of Matthew 24. All right, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The sign of Jesus coming is in the clouds of heaven. The sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And here we see great signs and wonders. Now, flash back to 1969. Even though it wasn't actual, uh, even though it was a lie, Every TV and radio broadcasted it. Every newspaper printed it. That these guys, they flew up into the heavens. And they showed it's a great sign and wonder. All right, that's one example. I, I was thinking about this I don't know if it yesterday day before I you know there's a whole bunch of stuff or there's a there's a good amount of stuff in the Bible that we talk about these great signs in heaven right and these false prophets false Christ are part of this world all right and this world is full of liars and deceivers all right I better turn back get back to where I was going here but you see here that there is gonna be deceivers waxing worse and worse deceiving and being deceived right so this is evident I don't know if I lost my train of thought or not but this is evident all throughout the Bible that the deceivers will get worse and worse. Oh, wait a second. What did I do there? Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. All right? That's the world that we're in. These people are they're growing in great numbers getting bigger and bigger and bigger and so here when we see that well there are 2.4 billion people saved that's assuming everybody that says they're a Christian is a Christian but Jesus says many shall come in my name many that's a lot and it's only going to grow and my contention my argument is that we are in that time right now 
that's been worse than ever before. There's never been a period of time when there's been so many people that say they believe in Jesus, but they're not. They're liars. They're unsaved devils. They don't believe in Jesus. They want to feel good about themselves. And they think that going to church on Sunday makes them a good person. And they are able to show themselves to the community, hey, I'm a good person. And then you've got a preacher that stands behind the pulpit encouraging them to feel good about themselves. And trying to convince themselves, well, if you come to us, your life will be better. If you come to church on Sunday, your life will be better. If you're a Christian like us. Your life will be better. I mean, Joel Osteen wrote a book, Your Best Life Now. Your Best Life Now. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Your Best Life Now. Because later... You're going to hell. 